Welcome back, everybody, to round one back nine coverage of the 2020 Clash at the Canyons 4. This is NYC Productions coverage presented by Link Disc Golf, Delwood Disc Golf, Disc Mania, Unstable Disc Golf Gear, Unstable Discourse Podcast, and Canna Pros Box. I'm Brian Earhart again, joined by Tristan Tanner. Welcome back, everybody. What's up? We have a decent card going so far. We have Nico and Philo under par at three under and two under, and then me and Gavin have struggled to kind of get the scoring going here. Here is hole 10. This is a, a, le- a right to left hole that you really want to control the skip on. Yes. There's a, a big cliff down to the left side that you can't really see. And if you go down there, it's you can't see the basket and it's no. very hard You're to scrambling make an approach. For sure. And we saw Nico go flex shot again. I tried going with kind of a push flick with something a little bit flippier. That was a Zeus. I was trying to get that forward skip to the basket again you're going to be skipping off gravel, so there's a lot to control there. Definitely. <laughs> very encouraging. Yeah, right out of his hand. And that was he, a very straight disc. Yeah. And unfortunately, clip something deep. As you can see, this is a really challenging green to access. But Nico has a nice lie, gets up and down. These little trees that Philo's about to go through are very tricky. Yeah. A lot of shots end up right behind those, and there are some little gaps. See you and Philo both there mm-hmm. have to contend with those. Yeah, not really a look at the basket. And this is where you don't want to be. No. And I believe he's back at the bottom of the hill. He doesn't want to be there at all. Ooh, actually, good bid from yeah. down there. That's that's a hard putt. Yeah, and you can't really see the basket for sure. Philo taps in a par. This is one of the holes in the course that I would call a bonus birdie. If you're getting this hole, you are taking, I would say, even over a stroke on the field. Definitely. This is a huge confidence builder as well because it's a really odd-shaped fairway and yes. gap. And when you execute that shot, it's really really can give you a lot of confidence. Absolutely. Nico taps in his pretty routine par. Encouraging the crowd a little yeah. bit there. <laughs> and Gavin, unfortunately, taking the bogey. Three pars. And we are moving into hole number 11, which is one of the only true wooded par fours on the course. We have a, kind of a straight shot off the tee. Nico almost making the gap. Very close. It does dogleg to the right. There is a mando tree that's been wrapped in green tape on the right side that you have to go around. And I'm throwing onyx here. Oh, oh. wow. That was looking so good. That would have, wow, that would have been way up there. Yeah, that was about as aggressive of a play as I could take on it. This is a pretty standard shot, just playing a yes. straight disc. You don't really need to finish right no. that much unless you're trying to get aggressive and maybe try to get a two look. Yeah. But if you just play it straight and even finish a little left, uh, you're going to have a pretty easy approach. Exactly. And Gavin has piped this sidearm. Gets the, oh, oh, gets the mulch skip. Wow. He has a little bit of an uphill run to uh, see if he can grab an eagle here. Forehand from Nico. How about Nico's sidearm? He's really been working on yeah. it the past couple of years, and it's it looks great. I mean, he's Dude. 15 feet away from the basket there. Great shot there. This needs to sit down a little bit again. Oh, wow. That's about as close to OB as I've ever seen a disc not go. Yeah, <laughs> as you were saying on the front nine, Every single basket out here feels like it's right on the water. Mm-hmm. There's always a little drop off, and again, we have these uh, fast, fast greens yep. like mulch or gravel on every single one of these greens. Really hard to control the disc mm-hmm. down into these baskets. It's much better to get up to the basket and slide to it rather than trying to land one at the basket here. And Gavin has laid up to about ten. Some uncharacteristic misses there for both you and Philo. Yeah, especially just <laughs> airballing it left like that. But 
It was one of those days where the putting stroke wasn't feeling terrible, but some of the longer putts just weren't mm-hmm. just weren't landing initially. But the comebackers, yeah, yeah, you the made all of, were going in. Yeah, some great comeback putts. <laughs> Gavin with a textbook birdie. Something I really like about Nico's putt is he always goes through some sort of routine. Yes. No matter how short his putt is. I mean, that was a, that was a drop in. He's not going to miss one of those, mm-hmm. and he still gets in the right focus and uh, helps translate it to future. Absolutely. Putts. I and I think him taking his time is a lot of you know him quelling negative thoughts. And I think a lot of times for him, sometimes he does take a while on his putt, but it's him telling himself, "I'm not going until I'm ready." Mm-hmm. And he's throwing a beautiful little nose up hyzer flip Cenus, that's just a little bit short again these rocks kind of frame up the green mm-hmm. and uh you just kind of want to miss those and and you'll be right at the basket oh, that was the last tree he had to miss this is one of the more straightforward holes in the course i'm flicking a zone here yeah this is really one of the ones that you want to get yeah it, especially after all these a little bit trickier par threes or just unreachable par fours. This one, you step up to it, and you're yeah. like, I, I got to get this one. Yeah, this is how you make up for it. Philo, I think he went rock here. And that line is just so smooth. Definitely. Again, see the ground play. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And he's about 25 from the basket. Gavin's got about 80 left. Trying to give that a run, but that's just fine. Not what he wanted, but looks like Nico's just inside the circle on that one. Didn't and quite have the step. Yeah. There's one. There's a great putt. There's one. Yeah. Good putt from Philo. He's getting some there you goes, but he knows deep down that he is losing strokes to the field there. Yep, definitely. A couple of birdies and a couple of pars. And we are going to move into hole number 13, which enters kind of a different section of the course, kind of the closing section. Big par four here, straight ahead, OB, tall grass on the left. Yeah, we get a couple holes out here in the field, and it told, it feels like a totally different course. Yeah. Like it goes from just hitting your gaps, tight lines, and then you just come out here and you just got to rip one. Mm-hmm. You got to just smash, and with all this new OB that they're adding to, it's... Uh, Definitely uh, adding a little bit of challenge to these holes, and Philo just throws a super smooth shot. Nico looking to go big. He's a very overstable defender that he's throwing. And he turned that thing super hard. Proof that you can still make an overstable disc fly on Anheuser. Definitely. Gavin going really high. Wow, very understable disc. That is That's huge. Smashed. Holy cow. The max distance line is one of Gavin's favorite lines to throw. Super high, super flippy, let it crash out. That should be a pretty routine up and down for him. A little short right, but that's that's just fine. He's got a putt inside the circle. Mm-hmm. This is your, your zone. Oh, yeah. The Any American chance American flag get. zone that you love so much. Yeah, that is a 2019 puddle top uh, ledge stone crystal zone. Okay. One of the best runs I've ever thrown. And look how flippy that disc is he that threw. That just was working up the That's whole way. That's a beautiful way. shot. Super smooth. Wow, and Gavin just has a little pitch sidearm. <laughs> and as my brother says, Gavin plays to win only. He'll take any time he can take an overstable disc and chip shot it, he will do that. There is a good putt from Nico. Nico's choice between spin putt and pitch putt, I still quite have not been able to pin down. Yeah, I think it's just a feel thing for him. That's what I'm starting to gather. Really rolls with confidence, and he even switches between a couple different putters in 
both of those putts. So so interesting. And I really have one putt, and it stays the same for the straddle. And snagged me a birdie. Philo got his. A little awkward footing, but no problem there. No problem. Besides the mini pickup. <laughs> that was a little rough, a little clumsy by Gavin, but we'll, for, we'll forgive him on that one. Yep. Hole number 13, we had a star birdie there, and uh, we're going to move into another long, long, long par four. Yeah, this, this one, it's really open off the tee, but you really don't need too much distance. No. And it's... The wind kind of gets blocked by these. There's a lot of trees right mm -hmm. behind this uh, tee pad. Yeah. And so you can't really quite feel what the wind's doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's really easy to find those OBs on the right and left. Yes, because all tall grass on this hole is OB. And the basket's kind of tucked back into the tree line. So, yes, throw it as far as you can inbounds and then a uh, pretty routine shot to the basket. But definitely wanting you to smash one here. Nico trying to play that right to left crosswind, and he does pretty well. Gavin ripping on one. That's a great shot yeah, from Gavin. Beautiful shot. And I, I actually on this hole, I like the rocks that are blocking the uh, blocking the green, kind of forcing the player to throw a landing shot as you can see Philo's doing right here. Yeah, what you can't see on this approach is there's actually yet another drop off yes. right behind the basket. This time not to water, so you're not gonna be OB necessarily, but there's a lot of bushes and really it, it comes up quick. Yeah, and I uh, have happened to find that with my shot. Didn't land it quite soft enough. Go, wow. Oh, that's going to sit very close. That's a great shot. This is where the bigger drive really helps, is mm -hmm. you can really have it coming in soft on this green. Exactly. And, and there, Gavin shows it great, just landing that putter soft. And I do have a little something at this basket, a little step putt. Ooh. Almost got it. Good birdie. And we have still not <laughs> addressed Philo's lie yet. That was a perfect rock shot. Yeah, beautiful rock shot. Three birdies and a par on uh, hole number 14. And we are going to move into one of the newer uh, tee pads on the course, actually. So this fairway actually has been freshly cut uh, as of potentially a year ago. And it's starting to finally open up and look a little bit worn in. You're hitting this tunnel and you're trying to flare hard to the left. Yeah, it's one of the rare shots where you're throwing through a gap, but you want to throw a really overstable disc. Yeah, it's challenging, challenging shot. Kind of like that. That's that's a beautiful shot. Again, this one's kind of, you almost just throw it through the gap, and you're counting on the skip, mm -hmm. but there are those little grass patches, and sometimes you just get nothing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, definitely one of the more challenging holes in the course when it comes to par threes and in a hole that you do get a, get a birdie on. I'm trying to go flick here. Oh. And uh, as you can see, my natural flick release is a little lower than, I, than it needed to be. Yeah. So I'm going with a tomahawk here. It's pretty much all I've got. And I pushed out to the other fairway for the short pad. Yeah, as you mentioned, the short pad, there are a lot of tee pads. There's two tee pads and two baskets on, on almost, every, almost hole. every hole on this course. And there actually are, uh, it's 27 holes as well. So if you come here uh, just uh, to visit a new course in the area, this is the one to come to. You'll have endless opportunity to play different layouts. Definitely a beautiful course. 
And, you know, potentially that might be the reason he has been opting for a spin putt, like you said. That push putt might be feeling a little bit shaky for him. Yeah, definitely. I was starting to see him lose his temper a little bit. Great up and down from Gav. And we got a few pars and a bogey on that hole. And then for the rest of the round, we're out in the open and we are trying to s grab as many birdies as we can here. This is one of the last uh, gettable par threes in regards to an easy shot. Oh, beautiful shot there from Philo. This hole plays very uphill. Yeah, it's 350, but it plays about 425, maybe yeah. 400. Yep, probably something like that. It is a, it, I mean, it's a wide open hyzer, but it really, it's really easy to leave it right or mm -hmm. early release it left or leave it short. So uh, it, it is a tricky hole for being wide open. Mm -hmm. I think Gavin was trying to throw a spike hyzer on that and just kind of sawed it off. I was trying to go a little bit higher. But I got a little bit of a path skip, so yep, that was nice. Skip there. Oops. Did you guys have a headwind on this hole? We did have a headwind, and I think that was the issue. I think that the lack of pushing was because of that. Come on. Get it, get it. Couldn't quite feel it from the tee. Nico was trying to get something going. He says, <laughs> Waves it See goodbye. Ya. And with the sun setting in the background. Oh, so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that actually ran through my head in that putt. It was such a beautifully framed moment in time with the rock green and the sun setting. And this course just really looks beautiful at nighttime. Definitely, definitely. And Nico, unfortunately, does not capitalize on the comeback, and he, at this point, was really hard on himself. Good birdie there from Philo. Solid putt there. And that is not a hole you want to take a bogey on. And he knows it. Definitely. A couple birdies, a par and a bogey. And we're going to move into the last par four on the course. And this is a brand new pin position. Um, and now there's a new fairway cut. It used to be uh, a hole where everyone took this right gap and went all the way down the fairway that way. I think... I think Philo was trying to go left there. There is a left fairway that's been cut, and the new basket's actually on the back side. Wow, I did not see anyone go down this left fairway. And I went down it rounds. pretty far. Wow, that's a great shot. Yeah, and that, there you go. There's oh, the basket beautiful. back there. So you can either go right side and just throw a spike hyzer over the tree line, or you can be more direct at it. And with how big of an arm Gavin has, he's just going to smash mm -hmm. two shots and get to the basket. Pretty big. Yeah, playing that right side is kind of, it's an awkward second shot. Yes. You really have yeah. to trust where you think the basket mm -hmm. is because you have no judges uh, to, to figure out where it is. Yeah, you're pretty much throwing a giant blind spike hyzer up the tree. And that's why I did, you know, opt for throwing that left gap that's been freshly mowed. And I thought Philo was going to do the same thing. I don't think he's much of a spike Kaiser thrower. No, not not much for sure. Gavin, on the other hand, is probably throwing a PD2 here. Decent shot, yeah. maybe about 35. That's that's honestly, that's not the miss you want necessarily, but it's almost better to cut it to inside because mm -hmm. it is so easy to just blast it way long at this exactly. basket. Exactly. And that was a pretty good shot from Nico. Philo, after pitching out, is throwing one of these. That's a very good Great shot. Great shot from Philo. I said he wasn't a spike hyzer thrower, but... but he <laughs> clearly is. <laughs> he just proved me wrong. 
pretty easy approach there from you. Yeah, and that's what I like the left gap for. I mean, if you have the opportunity to do that, you don't have to throw a spike hyzer now. Awesome putt from Great Gavin. Great putt. That's a very tricky one. Those bushes are yeah. very thick mm -hmm. on that part. Yeah, a lot of the rough in this course is pretty uh, tough to maneuver. There's Nico going back to that spin putt. <laughs> and he praises the disc golf gods for giving him the strength to make the 25-footer. Here I am from about 15. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's one of those putts where you just have to tap in and move on to the next hole. Yep. Because there really wasn't any win out there. There was no excuse to miss that. But yeah, sometimes you just have those days. Sometimes it's you just, miss, yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. Best thing to do there is to not let it uh, beat you up on the next putt. Definitely. After some solid birdies there, we're going to move into the last hole on the course. Yeah, hole 18 is one. It's a hard par three, but it's one that it feels like you should be able to get. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of people are going to be taking this wider hyzer and uh, contesting this tree line. And you'll see the basket come in right here next to Gavin's throw. You see that lined OB that actually only applies to another hole that's adjacent to it. That OB line does not apply to this hole. Nico going with a spike hyzer. Holy. And like you said, he hit some of that tougher dirt that uh, these paths are made out of and got kind of a nasty skit. What I like about Philo's throw is you know exactly what angle he's going to be throwing the moment he begins his approach. And mm -hmm. that's, I, I believe that's how he teaches as well. It's very direct and very simple alignment definitely something else about file is he he commits so well to every single yeah. angle that mm -hmm. he's throwing he visualizes the shot really well i try going forehand here and just come up a little bit short about 30 feet branches maybe in the way oh just barely low there from Philo. and that disc actually had crossed over that ob line i was talking about and philo thought that he was out of bounds there oh. and was not happy yeah but uh, was relieved to find out that he was still safe. Nope. Knew it right away. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Just you one set of those it right out of your hand. Kept throwing him a little bit high that day. And, and then the crowd totally thought that that uh, disc went in the basket. Wow. Never feels good to have that happen. No. To you. Philo cleaning up. <laughs> that was definitely how the round felt. A lot of missed opportunities, but it's not like we haven't missed before. Yeah, that's definitely. life. Gavin taps in, and that was a blast of a round. Yeah, that was a beautiful, beautiful round. Not quite what a couple of you guys were looking for, but uh, Philo and Nico both uh, with solid six downs. Yeah, um, they're going to be on uh, chase and lead card, I believe. Yeah, uh, going into the. Uh, final and second round yep uh, it is only a two round event um does not feel like a b tier whatsoever definitely thanks again to nyc productions for putting this on 